Hi everyone, and today I'm excited to share with you Learning Fast and Slow, a goal-directed, memory-based approach for dynamic environments. Basically, I've been spending the last four years trying to make fast learning and adaptable agents in dynamic environments. I started out using Alpha Zero and related approaches, and I found that it is quite good only at a specific narrow domain. How then to generalize to dynamic environments? So I realized the key is actually goal-directed learning as well as memory. And I will share more of the insights through this presentation. So what are the aims? The aims are basically to model how humans can actually be adaptable and to model it into AI systems. We don't exactly need to replicate the brain, but we can take the broad concepts and apply it. So this is the traditional reinforcement learning framework. The agent will see a particular state. The agent will take an action and the environment will give a feedback to the agent, some reward of how good the action is and also the new state or the new observation for the agent to then make another action and keep repeating until the environment episode is completed. So this seems all well, but let's take a look at what are some of the problems with using reward to learn. So one thing to note is, for example, in this ward maze here, where the agent at the top left is supposed to go to the bottom right. Okay, let's say we only get a reward when we reach the goal. Okay, firstly, the reward of one when we reach the goal of the door needs to be back propagated step by step using a Bellman update for every single path on this trajectory before we can update like maybe the state value functions accordingly. Okay, it can be state action functions or the Q value functions as well, but the idea is the same you need to keep updating from the end state all the way to the start state each time okay, you go to a particular end state. And this is only for the bottom right goal. What if the goal changes to maybe the bottom left? Then we, we need to relearn all these value functions again. Okay, The starting state could change as well. The obstacles could change. There's just too many things that needs to be done to update this value function. And it takes a long time for this to be updated as can be seen by the millions of iterations needed for traditional reinforcement learning algorithms. So what then can we do? We could instead use goal-directed action prediction. So one insight that I found is that, you know, when you are in a forest and let's say you want to navigate to a particular structure, you don't exactly need to plan in detail. You can just go with your gut feel, go with a general direction first. Okay, predict your first action you should take to head towards that tower. Okay, this is similar to the ward maze at the bottom right here. You can see that in order to reach the door, we just need to know a general direction of where the door is. You can just head straight first. It doesn't matter if there's obstacles because you can later use some count-based methods in order to navigate past the obstacles. All right, so we just need to predict the next action. And surprisingly, we can actually use self-supervised training, which is very similar to next token prediction in the transformer. Given a start state and the end state, we predict the action taken for the first action from the first state. So this means that our own trajectories can become our own source of truth, and we can do self-supervised learning on our own experiences. In fact, later I'll show also, the start and goal state need not just be the episode start state and episode goal state. It can be any start state and any goal state in between the episode, and you can just learn from it. Okay, this is very powerful. And next, modeling the world. Traditional approaches use Markov decision processes, such as mu0, learning the probabilities of transition between states, Dreamer v2 and v3, learning the latent spaces of the states. However, to get the probabilities of the transition accurately, you would need to sample multiple times. Okay, and this is not a very easy operation. You will need a lot of data to learn these probabilities. And it is also very difficult to learn these probabilities when there's so many different states probability can become intractable. So how then can we solve this? First, the key insight is that we don't have to model the whole Markov decision process fully. We just need to model what the agent is interested in. For example, if I live in Singapore, I don't really need to model what's it like in Atlanta because I'm not going to go there. Okay, unless I travel there, then I start to model the world there. So by limiting our Markov decision process to only that local area, we essentially need to model less and we learn faster. Also, we don't have to model the probabilities of transition. We can just basically take our memory samples of like state, next state, and action. 
Okay, we can just sample them and we can already see how how good or rather how much of the proportion of your samples, like for example, is action A or action B, you can then have a, your probabilities accordingly. And we just need to store this in like a hash table and just retrieve it. You can do this sampling method of approximating probabilities. So this leads me to the main idea of fast and slow. So fast and slow is basically, you first have a neural network that predicts an action given the state and the goal state. Okay, so this enables self-supervised learning. So this gives a rough approximate action. However, if you have memory, you probably will want to use it, right? Because like, for example, you want to do something new. If you can relate it to something old in your memory, it, perhaps you already have a nice trajectory that can help you reach that goal state. So we try to form trajectories in our memory and we do parallel retrieval. I'll explain this in the next slide. And this basically helps us to choose like a trajectory that is the shortest, helping to give local optimality. All right. And if we have a trajectory like that, we just take the action there and we override the fast goal-directed neural network. Okay, That's because the goal-directed neural network is just an approximation. So this memory enables fast adaptation because the moment you see something new, you can store it into your memory and you can retrieve it straight away the next time around. You don't have to learn multiple epochs like a traditional neural network. So how does the memory retrieval network work? We first take the goal state and the start state. Okay, We start from the start state and we sample from the start state, the start state, next state, and action tuples from your memory. And we keep sampling until you reach the goal state. So we sample across multiple branches, and this takes inspiration from the mini columns in the neocortex. We sample it. And the first branch that reaches the goal state, okay, performs some form of lateral inhibition and says to the rest, hey, you know, I'm the fastest. You all don't have to process anymore. So this kind of helps to build some optimality in terms of like, if you sample more, you will probably get more optimal paths. And after that, we just take the action of the most optimal path out of all the sample paths. And that's it. That's the memory retrieval network, which enables you to do look ahead planning by just sampling the memory. How about the goal-directed neural network? So as I mentioned earlier, we do self-supervised learning. So we learn not just from the states from the beginning until now, okay, like the orange, the green part of the mouse. We also learn from like the blue to the purple, which is the look-ahead planning, if we can find a look-ahead trajectory. So what's the intuition behind this? Okay, of course, hippocampal replay. Okay, people have normally said that hippocampal replay is to update the values from the end state to the start state. Okay, but here I propose a different way. I propose the fact that we go from the start state to the end state, then back again. It is something like modeling, self-supervised learning from any start state to any goal state within that trajectory itself. So why do we do this? Suppose I know how to go from A to C via B, like A to B to C. Then with just one experience alone, I know how to go from A to B. I also know how to go from A to C. And I also will know how to go from B to C. So in one episode like this, I already learned three start and go states. This is very sample efficient. It helps us to maximize the limited amount of experience that we learn in this world and can use it for various other experiences that are similar in the future. So this is something that I like a lot. And the fact that we can use self-supervised learning means that we can learn without reward from the environment, which sometimes can be like a hack. And if we can do away with reward, we can actually learn much faster. So how do we use this whole procedure from start to end? Given a start state, and I know my end state, I first use the fast neural network to give me some action probabilities of the various actions. So I do an explore exploit because you know sometimes your neural network may not be right. But if you have been to that state before and you know that you, that state action transition has been done before, you want to try something new. So this is where your exploration comes in. So this is a variant of the UCT algorithm. And after that, we use the slow memory retrieval and see if we can get a trajectory. If so, we will override this action from the, the fast system of system one. If, let's say, we cannot get any trajectory, then we will just take the fast system, system one, and go with it. Okay, how about the memory update? Whenever you go to a new state, you update the state, next state, action, trajectory, or tuple into the memory. We remove all the memories that conflict with this transition. Okay, this is because 
when the environment changes, we don't really want the old memory anymore. We want to replace all of them. And then we perform hippocampal replay to update the fast neural network. All right. So the second step when we remove all current memories that conflict, this is actually something similar to like the intrinsic curiosity module where we increase curiosity when we have a prediction error. This means that we start to relearn again everything from that state onwards, which is a good thing because in this case, we can learn from dynamic environments and focus on what we don't know. So then we do some evaluation and we basically do an evaluation on an environment with varying start and end states for 100 episodes. And in the middle, we will change the orientation of the obstacles. We compare fast and slow with leading RL methods such as proximal policy optimization, PPO, and various other methods. And the main results are as follows. Fast and slow achieves a 91.7% soft rate, 91.9% soft rate, and it's way better than proximal policy optimization of 61.2% in a 10 by 10 environment. We also see similar trends in 40 by 40. We also see that the fast and slow is pretty optimal. It's like 1704 steps compared to PPO's 4670 steps. So it shows that the memory retrieval mechanism helps to make it locally optimal as well. Ablation studies also show that by removing the fast or the slow components, we actually get very poor performance. And one interesting thing to note is that by increasing the depths of the look ahead, as well as the number of parallel branches we do look ahead, we can actually improve the trajectories that are retrieved. Okay? And this increased the perf performance quite well, which means that even without any training in the future, just by increasing how you do your memory retrieval, depth and breadth, you can actually increase performance. That is huge. Okay, It means that you can learn from your data better with better retrieval techniques. So in conclusion, the traditional value systems based on reward, such as actual critic, are slow to converge. And I propose that we should use a goal-directed action prediction learning instead. This is in line with the current transformer era, where we can do self-supervised learning using next token prediction we can do the same thing for an agentic learning. And also we should use memory in addition to neural networks because neural networks take very long to learn while memories, you can learn from a single episode. This is useful in situations whereby if you see a snake on one path, you, don't want, to avo you want to avoid that path for the next time round, you can just retrieve your memory and you will avoid it. Right? Memory adapts much faster than neural networks. And lastly, role modeling. We don't want to model probabilities because it's very slow to model. We instead do memory sampling of the relevant memories and we already can have like the probabilities if you need them or you can already do the transition modeling from the start to the goal state just by doing sampling. So we can do look ahead planning with memory. So all this and more, if you want to find out more, learning fast and slow is actually part of my 10 year plan. I'll be talking more about it on my YouTube. And I believe that this is the core foundation for creating fast and adaptable systems, which might lead us closer to AGI. And that's all for my presentation. Hope you all learned something from it and I'm keen to take feedback from everyone. See you.